Welcome to MEM 16008, Interact with Computer Technology. Before we begin, let's have a look at some of your student resources. This lecture is a supplement to your student workbook and other resources made available to you. If you haven't yet done so, download and read the participants workbook. The participants workbook and other resources are available to you from PMoodle. Just a reminder that Moodle or PMoodle is available on your favourite mobile device. To complete this unit, you will need access to a desktop publishing suite like Microsoft Office. If you don't have access to Microsoft Office, LibreOffice is a free alternative available for Windows, Mac and Linux. All the examples in this lecture will be done on Google Docs. Google Docs is a cloud-based application where you create documents, spreadsheets and slides online. Once you've created a Google account, you'll have access to Google Docs and 15 gigabytes of cloud storage. PConnect is Pertex cloud storage system where you can download work instructions, safety data sheets, risk assessments, so forth. All the Pertex parts and part numbers are referenced from www.pertex.com.au. The recommended YouTube channel for this unit is Kevin Stravert's Master Technology. This channel has heaps of step-by-step -step tutorials and instructions on how to do things with desktop publishing software. Pause the video now to record the YouTube channel address. Just a reminder, by pressing the windows and the print screen, you can take a screenshot of the slide. By pressing Windows and V, we can get a list of all the screenshots that are stored in the buffer. You can then go and view them or paste them into a document or print them out. Pause the video now and practice Windows print screen. If you're not sure how to take a screenshot on your particular device, just Google how to take a screenshot on my particular device, in this case, Android tablet. Let's get started, the main lecture. Before we continue, let's look at security and your device. Criminal organizations rake in billions every year stealing people's private information and holding them to ransom. Although antivirus software is necessary for each platform, Windows is the most susceptible. Microsoft Windows powers most of the world's desktop computers and laptops and have been the case for many years. This makes it the prime target for malware and virus makers. It is therefore the most vulnerable to viruses. Other products like Macs and Chromebooks engineer some level of protection in the system. Most malware and viruses target stealing your personal information or hijacking your computer. It is extremely important that you protect your computer against viruses and malware. Computers are usually infected by viruses and malware through an installation process, usually the result of following a link from a website or an email. Most modern operating systems will warn you that a program is being installed on your computer. Firewalls protect your computer by closing all the back doors into your system. 
firewalls can also be configured as filters so you can determine what gets to your computer. As with antivirus software, it's important to keep your firewall software up to date as criminals are working very hard to circumvent any security measures that you have in place. You can make yourself invisible on the internet by using a VPN, a virtual private network. This just happens to be the exact type of software the scammers use. Let's look at some simple tips and rules for being safe online. Firstly, don't open or click on emails from strangers. Here is an example of a fake email from Telstra. Closer look at this email, we can see a number of spelling mistakes. And if we click on the from, we can see that it's not a Telstra email. It's a random or probably, most probably a stolen email address. Clicking on the link in the email could have infected my computer or taken me to a fake payment site where the criminals would have stolen my credit card or account details. Here's another example of a fake email that I got from someone pretending to be from Netflix. Always make sure your devices are up to date. Make sure your operating systems, your virus firewall software are all up to date. Use strong passwords. Do not use the same password for more than one account. Here's an example of a password management program I have on my phone. In this example, I've connected to pConnect. Obviously, this is not a real uh, password for the account, but every time I update my password, I automatically generate a new password in my app. And this manages all my passwords and keeps them up to date. Never share your username or password with anybody. Use two-factor identification. We've all logged into our bank and then we get an SMS code on our phone. And again, that's how I even connect with my email. Again, make sure that your private data and login details are secure. Under no circumstance should you ever give the SMS code that you received on your phone to anybody or anything online. Criminals work very hard to mimic and trick you onto clicking things on the internet. Sometimes we can see here the Pertech website, we can have all of these variations, only one of them is a real website. And this could be somebody pretending to be a bank or a login site or a PayPal or whatever. They go to a lot of trouble to mimic the sites. Read the address very carefully. Be careful using free Wi-Fi. Use your hotspot on your phone rather than connecting to unfamiliar Wi-Fi networks. Back up your files regularly. Use cloud-based storage, again, with secure passwords. This way, if somebody locks you out of your computer, you haven't lost your data. You can just install a new operating system and log back into your cloud storage. Criminals know that you're busy and you're in a hurry, but we need to be smart with our financial information. Regularly check your statements. Get your bank to notify you on every transaction. You can set up your net banking to send you an SMS every th time you're paid or you've paid somebody. Do not share personal information on social media. That means your birth date and other critical information like addresses and so forth. Always use two-factor authentication when doing online transactions or logging in to systems. Use a secure password manager and password generator. Use a virtual private network. Mask your existence while you're online. Always be on the alert for phising and other nasty tricks. Subscribe to Scam Watch.
alert groups. Set a daily credit limit for all your credit and debit cards. It's also important to educate your friends and family, especially the older people in our community, because they can fall prey to uh, criminals and, and scammers. A couple of things to uh, remind our friends and family is that you can't pay your tax bill with gift cards. The tax department, social security, etc. don't ring people up. The tax department and social security don't usually request you reply to an email or click on a link in their email. Never, ever, ever give anyone your password or allow them to remote connect to your computer. If you're suspicious about the identity of somebody that you're speaking to on the phone, ask them for a landline phone number and ring them back. If you're still suspicious, contact the police or the authorities. It's very important to remember if you are being asked to pay a bill using cryptocurrency or gift cards, it is probably a scam. And again, avoid sharing personal information online or social media or to anybody. This includes usernames and passwords, credit card numbers and details, tax file numbers, driver's license numbers, social security numbers, etc. All somebody needs to steal your identity is your driver's license number and your Medicare number, and they're well on their way to destroying your life. Now let's have a look at hardware and software. Computer hardware. This consists of the physical parts of your computer. Computer hardware or computers come in many different configurations, desktops, tablets, mobile devices. Whatever the configuration, they all have one thing in common. They have obviously a physical shape, a way of getting information in, a way of getting information out, the brain and the storage. We've already discussed the physical configurations of computers. Computers can be complete units like desktops and tablets or just a circuit board. These are used for embedded systems like vending machines, ticketing systems and automation applications. Getting information into computers. We're all familiar with the keyboard. We can get information into computers using barcode readers or QR code readers, 3D scanners. Facial recognition is another way of getting information into a computer. And of course, your humble mouse, your scanner, your webcam, digital cameras, so forth. Getting information out of a computer, obviously through the monitor, printers and projectors. Sometimes we share information to a cloud-based system or to the internet or to other computers. Other ways of getting information or data out of computers is to 3D print the information. Robotics. A CNC machine has an embedded computer in the controller. Some hydrostatic Pressure testing units have an embedded computer in the controller. Here is another example of a computer controlled machine. A computer controlled tube or pipe bending machine. This has an embedded computer in the controller for controlling and calculating bend allowance, directions and shapes. And now the processor, which is basically the brain. There are many types of processors around, but you just need to remember it's all about speed and the more things that you can do at the same time. Keep in mind, the faster your processor, the more expensive it'll be. This is my laptop. I paid $1,400 for it. It does 4.8 
million calculations per second compared to this embedded system the Raspberry Pi this costs about $60 and this can do one and a half million calculations per second if you're interested in uh, robotics or automation or programming in general the Raspberry Pi is a great entry point around $60. It's well supported. Uh, Python is a popular programming language used with the Raspberry Pi. You can install Linux on the Raspberry Pi and you can surf the net, do word processing and do anything that you can do on a normal computer for about $60. You will need a monitor, keyboard and mouse to plug into the Raspberry Pi if you want to use it as a computer. Pause the video now, take a snapshot of the screen, or record the Raspberry Pi uh, website. Storage and memory. Your computer will require a bit of memory to run the programs and do the processing. And there's also memory for storage of data and information. We're all familiar with uh, USB drives and uh, hard drives. Uh, Cloud-based storage is now the big thing. And keep in mind that if you've got a Google account, you have 15 gigabytes of cloud storage available to you. Now let's have a look at software. Software is the set of instructions or the programs that make your hardware work. There's plenty of information on the net in relation to desktop applications. One of the YouTube channels that we recommend is Kevin Stover. He's an ex Microsoft employee and he does a great uh, video vlog on different types of softwares. Pause the video now, take a snapshot and record the uh, YouTube channel address for Kevin. Uh, keep in mind, links are available in PMoodle also to all the YouTube channels and websites uh, referenced in this lecture. The number one alternative to Microsoft Office 365 is LibreOffice, and we will be using LibreOffice in this lecture for our examples. If you are using Microsoft Office or Google Pages, you can still follow along in this tutorial as the only thing that's different is the location of the functions in the menus. The LibreOffice Getting Started Guide is available from PMoodle for download, or you can uh, find it using the help function in LibreOffice. In today's example, we're going to create a work instruction, and we're going to be using a couple of different software tools to complete our document. The first application that we're going to be looking at is LibreWriter, which is the word processing application in LibreOffice. By clicking the new icon in any of the LibreOffice apps, you'll get the application drop down menu. In this case, we're going to select Writer Document, which is the word processing application for LibreOffice. We can see here in the original work instruction, they've used a table to organize the information at the top of each page. So we're going to insert a table, format the table, and populate the table. We can access functions in LibreOffice two ways, using the main menus or using icons. Once we've created a table, we can highlight the table, right click on the table, and then we can get a menu to manipulate the table, merging cells, changing colors, uh, border thicknesses, etc. Tech tip for tables. When learning how to use tables or create tables, create a practice document. Practice inserting, deleting, modifying your tables before committing them to your master document. Here's our table for page one populated. Note that we inserted a 
picture or a logo in the table also. Now that we've started our document, it's very important to give our document an appropriate file name and save it in an appropriate location. Once you get a bit more experience with these software packages, you can actually set automatic saves at certain points in time. Here's an example of me entering more information into the work instruction. I've deliberately misspelled a couple of the words there. We can see that they're underlined and we can right click on those underlined words and get some spelling options. I'm going to continue to use tables to keep my document nice and tidied and formatted. So I'm going to create another table with three cells where I will insert pictures and some text. As well as inserting pictures into my work instruction, I'm going to have to modify or edit those pictures. So I'm going to use the LibreOffice drawing application for this task. To launch LibreDraw, all I have to do is click on the open icon and select drawing. Here we can see I've opened a picture. I've added the arrows to my picture. And now I will proceed to save this edited picture so I can later insert it into my right document. OK, time to return to the LibreOffice Write application. There's a couple of ways of navigating through applications on your computer. Again, this will depend on what operating system you're using. I'm using Windows 11. In my case, I just press Tab and Alt, and I get all the windows that are, all the applications that are open on my computer. I go and select the right application, and I can continue editing my document. In the right application, I select Insert Image. I navigate to the folder where I saved the edited picture, and I insert it into my table. I return to LibreDraw, edit the second picture, and once again, I import that picture into my right document. By highlighting the table and going to Table Properties, we can change the appearance of the tables, adding a border, changing the background colors, and so forth. Don't forget to practice these in your practice table. My first page is done. I'm going to click on the print preview icon to see what it's going to look like if I print it or export it to a PDF file. At the second page, I select my title block, I copy, and then I paste it into the second page. The original work instruction has some diagrams that I need to insert. So it looks like we return to LibreOffice Draw to create these diagrams. I use the drawing functions in LibreOffice Draw to create the diagram. And now I can prepare to insert that into my work instruction. If you're new to drawing packages, don't forget to go to help and do a couple of the getting started tutorials. This will save you a lot of time and grief. We can insert the diagram into our work instruction, obviously by saving it and importing it into our working document, or we can use a window snipping tool where we basically see stretch a window around what we need to copy. We copy it and then we paste it. Control C, Control V into our work instruction. The snip tool is available on all Windows version. Uh, just type snip in the search bar to locate the application. We've inserted the diagram into our work instruction and we've populated the second page. OK, back to Office Draw as we've got some more images to edit and create. In this example, I took some photos. I imported it into the LibreOffice Draw program. I added some markup and instructions. 
And then I use the Windows Snip tool to cut and paste those pictures into my work instruction. These pictures were taken with my iPhone and then saved to my Google Cloud account. Here's my third page, populated, spell checked, and of course, saved. Let's create our fourth page and prepare it for insertion of our final image. There's a nice image of a cutoff saw in the learning manual, the Pertec way, 10 step hose procedure. So I'm gonna open this PDF file and use my snip tool to uh, copy the cutoff saw image so I can paste it into my work instruction. Mm. Here's the image from the Pertec learning manual. I paste it into my work instruction. Obviously, I'm going to do a bit of resizing to make sure it fits nicely on the page. Complete the population of page four and, of course, save. In this example, I'm going to export my document as a PDF file because this is a very common file sharing format. And again, we can use the export as export as PDF in LibreOffice to save my document as a PDF file. Here we have my work instruction saved as a PDF file. Your file can be saved in many different file formats. Again, it's by selecting save as, we can save as Microsoft Word and other major formats. You can import and edit PDF files in LibreOffice when you open a PDF file, it takes you to the LibreDraw application. You can edit the file, save, and then re-export as a PDF file. Another common application used on computers is the spreadsheet program. Spreadsheets are used for organizing and analyzing data in real time. To launch the spreadsheet program, click on the open icon and select spreadsheet. In this example, I created a live spreadsheet to calculate my minimum and maximum hose length for different ranges. As you can see in this example, as I change the hose lengths, the minimum length and maximum length automatically update. If you're wondering how I recorded that Video in the previous slide, Windows comes with a built-in screen record function. Press Win and Alt and R at the same time to record the video. As with Windows Draw, I can select this table from the spreadsheet program, copy it by using Control C or right-clicking on the table and selecting copy and paste it into my writing document. Here we can see the table is now inserted into my writing document. Always remember to utilize the help and the tutorials available inside LibreOffice. Look around the internet and YouTube. There's thousands and thousands of uh, tutorial videos to help you get started with LibreOffice.